Hey guys, welcome to Coding Shorting with NJ. In this tutorial, we are going to learn to implement a registration and login system with email verification, but in MVC or model view controller style. I'm coming to this MVC part later, but let me first explain the email verification part. So our registration is basically done in two parts. The first part is a normal registration part where you go to a website with which you want to be registered. You fill in your details and then you are sent an email in your inbox which contains a link. Once you click on that link, only then your registration is complete and now you can finally log into the website. Until you click on that link and verify your email, your registration is not complete and you cannot log in. So today we are going to implement this whole logic but in MVC style. Now what do we mean by MVC style? When it comes to web development, MVC is the most popular development style or design pattern. So if we are going to develop in MVC style, that means we are going to divide our application into three main building blocks. One of those building blocks is called view. Now view is nothing but what the end user can see in the browser. So that means HTML, JavaScript that dynamically manipulates it and the styling. That means the CSS. These all three parts comprise of our view because view is what the user views in the browser. Now let's discuss model. Model is that component of the MVC where the actual business logic of our web application or the task that that web application is trying to achieve is defined. For example, if we are implementing a calculator using MVC style, all the functions that are going to perform mathematical operations such as addition, multiplication, subtraction, division and other mathematical operations definition of those functions is going to be called model. So the file in which we have implemented those functions is basically our model. We don't have to specifically name it model but logically the actual computation or actual logic is executed there or defined there so that's why that part is called model. Now for most of the web applications database is a very integral part of that logic. Whenever the user wants to interact such as login or register there is always a database at the back end with which the user credentials are verified. If it's a hotel registration website, then whenever a customer books a room, again there is a database where these details are going to go. So almost always when you interact with website using browser, you are interacting with database as well. Therefore, most of the time a model usually contains access to database. So that's why a model is also called a data layer. Now comes the controller's role. Controller acts as a traffic cop between our view component and our model component. When the view, that is our browser, makes any request, that request directly lands with the controller. Controller looks at the request and figures out these particular tasks need to be executed in this particular order so that the user's request is satisfied. So controller asks the model to execute those tasks and model starts executing those tasks. Then the model sends the final result back to the controller and if controller needs to wrap those results in, in a particular order to be sent to the customer, then controller performs that wrapping and then finally sends the result back to the view. One particular example that I am going to give you about that wrapping part is that once the data is received from the model, the controller is going to convert into JSON object and sends the data in the JSON form back to the controller. So that's the wrapping example of our controller. So I hope by now you have understood the basic idea behind MVC and what are the roles of each of those components in the MVC. If not, there is no need to despair. We are going to implement our project in MVC style and by the end of this tutorial, you will have a pretty good idea about what bits of your logic should go in which part of MVC. Okay, that's enough rambling about MVC. Now let me give you a demo of what we are going to implement today. And for the demo, what you are looking at is what we are going to build today. Currently, I have opened up the registration section. Let me refresh. So this is kind of landing page of our website which is empty. So I didn't want to start with an empty frame. That's why I had already opened up the registration section which is a form which appears once I click on the register. And if I click on this login, we get to see another form which is about logging in. I'm not going to style the including section in this tutorial. However, when I upload this code on GitHub, the CSS is going to be part of that project. So don't worry if you are interested in the CSS as well. It's going to be there for you guys. So I'm going to start off with the login system but before logging in let me show you the database table where we are going to register our users. Okay this is the database which we are going to use. I have named it email verification db and in this database we have only one table named user and currently it consists of only one record. So the name with which I have registered is 
triple Q. The email is my email ID because I actually need to receive the email so that I can click on the link. If I had put any random email over here, I would not have been able to receive the link and my registration would never have gotten active. So this is password, current password 1234. And this is the verification code which was part of the link which was sent in my email on which I was supposed to click. Before clicking on that link, the verification status is zero. Once I click on that link, the request comes back to my controller, that is my server. And then the verification status is set from zero to one. So one means I have verified my email and now I can actually log in. So using this account, let's try to log in and see what happens through our view component, that is our browser. So the name is triple Q and password is one, two, three, four. Triple Q and password is 1234. Click. Welcome Triple Q. You have successfully logged in. Now let's refresh it. Let's go back to our database table and let's remove this record. The reason I removed this record is because I want to show you the registration process in action. And since we need to click on the link which we, which we receive in our email, so we need to have an invalid email address over here. And if I show you the structure of this table, the name and email IDs are supposed to be unique. So that means if you have registered a one user with the name triple Q, you cannot have another user with same name. And that applies to emails as well. Therefore, I had to remove that record because that record contained my email ID. Now, before I show you the registration process in action, I need to set some configurations for my Google account so that my Google account allows this PHP program to log in on my behalf and create an email and send it to the user, whoever we want to send this email to. If we don't set those settings, Gmail server will not allow our PHP program to log in. So I need to inform Gmail that if an application tries to log in on my behalf, it is okay and you should allow it. So let's go and tell our Gmail account just that. So as you can see, I'm already logged in my Gmail account. So let me click on this icon, manage your Google account, then select security. And we need to turn this on, less secure app access. We have to turn this on by default, it's always off. So click, now let's go to our actual Gmail account. Now click on this settings icon, see all settings forwarding and pop slash imap and we have to enable imap come down and save the changes we are done with the configurations now let's go and finally register myself with the web app that we are going to design so register for the username let me change a different name triple t this time and for the email the same gmail account password one two three four register thanks for registering with us your account will be activated once you verify your email. Now, before we go and check our email in the Gmail box, let's go and check our database table. Refresh. Now, as you can see, a new entry could be seen in the user's table with the name triple Q. The email is my email address. Password is 1234. This is the verification code that has been generated and the verification status is zero. Now let's try to log in with this name and this password while the verification status is zero and see what happens. Login. Username is triple T. Password is 1234. Login. You have not yet verified your registration. So that means I cannot log in because I still need to go to my inbox, click on the link that is going to update the verification code from zero to one and only then I'll be able to actually log in. So let's go to the inbox. So here I have received a message from me, myself, because I sent it to myself. Here is the subject. And thanks for registering with us. To activate your account, click here. So I'm going to click over here. So if you see in the bottom left corner, you can see the email address where this link is going to take. So it's going to take us back to our backend server, which I have named controller.php because our server, which receives the HTTP request from the browser is controller now in our MVC architecture and it consists of one key value pair in its query string. The key is code and its value is the same verification code that, that is stored in our users table. So let me click and I have been redirected to this page which says status is verified. That means I have successfully verified my email. 
Now let's go back to the database first and see if any change has been made there. Refresh. And as you can see, the verification status has been changed from 0 to 1. Now I should be finally able to log in with triple T and 1234 as password. So let's give it a try. Login, triple T and password. Welcome triple T, you have successfully logged in. So that's it. We have successfully registered a user after verifying its email. And now we are able to log in. Now the only thing left to do is that we have to actually build this project from scratch. So let's start coding shorting. Okay, for the coding shorting, we are starting off with an empty folder in our Visual Studio Code Editor. And since we are going to develop this project around MVC style, therefore we are going to have at least three files. One is going to represent the view component. The second one is going to represent the model component. And the third one is going to represent the controller component. Our view file is going to be a HTML file, whereas model and controller both are going to be PHP files. So why not let's create those files first view.html and since this view file is going to require CSS for styling and JavaScript for dynamic manipulation so let's create those as well so I'm going to give it view style.css name and for the JavaScript let's call it view script.js so all three files are empty at the moment now let's create model.php and controller.php files as well We will be needing one more file where our verified user is going to be redirected once it clicks on the link sent in the email. But let's leave that file out until we actually need it. So let's start with view.html. I have generated the basic skeleton code. Now before we any code in the body of this HTML file, let's link our styling and JavaScript files with it. So we have given our name viewstyle.css. Now at the end, let's link our JavaScript file, which we have given name viewscript.js. Currently, both of these files are empty. Now let's work on the body section. The body section is going to consist of four children. The first one is going to be an HTML element named header in which we are going to define the header of our web page. The rest of the three children are going to be sections. One section is going to consist of the registration form. Second section is going to consist of the login form. And the third section is going to represent the message that we receive once we have registered or logged in. So once the response comes back from the controller, that response is going to be displayed in the third section. So let's start with the header part first. This header consists of three children a div called logo in which you basically are going to display a logo second one is h1 element which is going to represent the heading which is the third child is going to be an unordered list with just two list items the first one is called register and the second one is called login Okay, we are done with the header part. Now let's define the section which is going to contain our registration form. So let's give it a class name. Registration section. Now this section consists of an H2 tag and its caption is registration. Now let's define a form and let's give it a class name. Register hyphen form. We don't need action part because we will send our request to fetch API. Within this form, we need an input field for the username of type text. So the name of this input field is name. We don't need an ID. However, we need a placeholder username. We need another input field for email. So the type is going to be email name is email again we don't need an id however we do need a placeholder because i'm not going to define any labels for these input fields so the placeholders are going to play the role of the label for those input fields let's remove this space the third input field is going to be password of type password so the name is going to be password as well again 
no id just placeholder with the word password we are also going to need a hidden input field so i am going to give it name register and value is also going to be register but for the time being i am going to comment this field out the reason for commenting out this field at the moment is that i haven't yet explained to you why i have used this hidden input field but if i explain to you right now it might not make much sense so i'm holding back this explanation until the right time comes so we will need it but currently it doesn't make sense to have a hidden field so that's why i have commented this out now let's work on the final input field of type submit let's give it a name value register whatever you place over here is going to be displayed as the caption of this input field so it's better to have a value which makes more sense to the users of this web application or registration form so okay so we are done with the registration section now let's work on the login section we need almost similar logic for the login section therefore i am copying it and pasting it over here let's change the section name from registration section to login section and form name from register form to login form we don't need any email for logging into our account so i remove the email input field we also need a hidden input field for our login form as well however we need to change its name and value from register to login and let's change the value of submit type from register to login as well okay so we are done with the second section as well now let's work on our third section third section is going to be used for displaying message received from the server so let's give it a name message section it consists of a paragraph and let's for the time being put some lorem ipsum text let's say 15 words so that's it we are done defining our html file now let's go and check this out in the browser so right click on view.html and open with live server this is how it currently looks because there is no styling defined over here what i'm going to do now i'm going to bring in all the css and and we'll continue from there okay so this is how it currently looks and it isn't the look i was expecting so that means i must have misspelled some class names so let me go and check it out so it must have something to do with this registration section because apparently this is visible so had everything gone correctly this section would not have been visible at all because the default display properties for all the section is none so that no section is visible when we just land on this web page so let me go and check it out okay so the name should be register section not registration section now let's go and check okay great now we are settled let me click on this register part nothing happens login part nothing happens can you guess why nothing happens that's right because we haven't yet defined any dynamic logic in our javascript file now for the javascript we are going to start off by defining the logic which is going to make those forms appear and disappear when we click on the relevant menu links that is register and login that means we need to have references to those menu items in our javascript file so let's start with that did we give class names to those li items so that we can mention the class name over here let's go and check okay we haven't so let's give it a class name register half an li like login hyphen li now let's go back to our javascript file register hyphen li we need reference to our login hyphen li as well let's give it li to both of them so that we don't forget that this is actually a reference to our lii now we need to define click event listeners for both of those elements so that when you click on register our registration form appears and when we click on login our login form appears so let's start with the register li a event listener and the event is click that we are interested in 
let's define arrow function now in the arrow function the only thing that we need to do is that we have to make sure that if any other section is currently visible on the window their display property should get none so that they disappear and the registration form should appear that means we need to have references to all three of those sections as well so let's define references to those section elements register section document dot query selector and the class name that we gave to registration section is register hyphen section copy paste for login section and message section so let's change the name from register to login and the last one is message section since we are defining click even for register li item so we have to make sure that login section and message sections display properties are set to none so login section dot style dot display equals none and not login message section dot style dot display let's assign it none as well finally register section dot style dot display equals block that's it that's all the logic needed for making a registration form appear on the screen so let's copy this we need to define a similar event listener for login section so we have to set the display property for login section to block and for the rest of the two let's set them to none okay since we are accessing the class name so we should we must put a dot with the class names which I forgot to put. Oh, the click spelling is incorrect. And I have noticed another mistake. So here I am supposed to target login li. So we need to define event listeners for the li items. And I had put login section over here. So when we click on the login li items, then the login section should appear now everything seems fine let's go and check it out let's click on register okay we can see a registration form appearing on our browser now let's click on the login now as you can see the registration form disappeared and login form appeared but since we copy pasted the form from registration to login so i forgot to change the title so let me go back to our html and change the contents of the h2 from registration to login in our second form okay so this is the second form login section one let me change this from registration to login register and login Okay, so now we are able to make our forms appear and disappear. Now what should we define next? Well, obviously now we need to define fetch APIs so that once we have filled in this form and clicked on this login or registration button, a HTTP request must be sent to our server for further processing. And since we are using fetch API to send those HTTP requests, so let's define those fetch APIs. But where shall we define those fetch APIs? So we want this logic to get triggered once we click on these buttons login or register. So let's define an event listeners for both of those input fields. That means we need references to those input fields. Okay. Now since we have two input fields, one for each form, we need to have a way to uniquely identify those input fields. Therefore, we have to give it a class name. So let's give it a class name. register hyphen submit copy and for the second input field of type submit paste this one and change it name from register hyphen submit to login hyphen submit now let's go to our javascript file and let's first get references to those input fields Sorry, login hyphen submit. 
copy paste and the second one is going to be register hyphen submit now we got references now let's define event listeners for both of those input fields let's start with the register input field and the event we are defining is for click arrow function in this event listener the first thing that we want to do is that we want to disable the default behavior associated with form so the default behavior associated with the form is that when its submit button is clicked the user is redirected to the page which is defined in the action attribute of the form we don't want the user to be redirected anywhere we want the user to stay on the same page therefore the arrow function that we are going to define we have to pass the event which was triggered once this event object has been passed to the event listener we are going to call a function called prevent default so this is going to prevent the default behavior associated with the form and as a result we will be staying on the same page now let's make a fetch request so this fetch method is part of fetch api which is part of every browser available this fetch method takes two parameters the second one of them is optional but the first one which is mandatory defines a url where this fetch request is going to send a http request so basically our backend where our server is running so let's give it an address that where should this go so we want it to go to a file named controller.php since this controller.php is a local file we can just provide slash that means it start from the root folder and in that root folder we have a file named controller.php the second parameter is a javascript object and within this second argument which is a javascript object we are going to at least define two fields the first one is going to be the http method that we want to send this http request as if we don't provide this the default method is get but since we have a form data that we want to be sent to the server so we want the data to be sent in the body of http request and it should not be attached as a query string in the url therefore we have to change the http request method from get to post so therefore we must provide method and set its value to post the second thing that we need to provide is we have to get the form data ourselves from the form and attach it in the body had we use the form's default action attribute this whole thing would have been done for us automatically but since we are not using the form's default method we are separately creating this whole fetch request this whole http request and sending it to the server using this fetch api therefore we have to do the job which was done for us automatically had we used the form's default method so that means in the body we need an object of type form data so this form data is going to contain all the input fields or all the fields in our form converts it into key value pairs so the name is going to be the key and the contents of that input field are going to be its value and then they will be sent to the server as http post data so we need new form data this form data needs a reference to the form whose data we want to grab and convert it into key value pairs so that means we need to have a reference to the form therefore let's go up and create a reference to the forms we have two forms the first one is called register form register hyphen form and by called i mean the class name so this is the name that we gave to the registration form copy paste now the second one is going to be the login form now we have got references to the forms and since we are defining the event listener for the registration form so let's provide register form to it as its argument now a fetch request always returns a promise and a promise is captured through a then block therefore we are defining a then block it's going to consist of response object and since the data is going to be sent in the json format so we are going to call json method on this response object this json method again is going to return us another promise so another then block so what this json method will do 
it's going to convert the data from json into javascript object for us and it's going to return us as a promise so we have another then block in which we will receive that as a javascript object over here so now we can define the logic over here and append it in our html dom so that it appears on our browser window since we want to display this data in the message section when the data is displayed in the message section we want all the forms to have disappeared and only the message section should be visible in the browser window so that means we have to make both the sections invisible by setting its display property to none so we have to set the display property of log login section to none the display property of message section should be block and registration section should also be invisible but let me put it over here so that first i am setting the display property of the irrelevant sections to none and then i am making the message section get visible so once it's get visible now i am going to define the inner html of this message section and let's define a paragraph and within the paragraph i just want to display whatever we have received from this data so i'm using in string interpolation and this data is a complete object so obviously we cannot display an object directly we have to refer to its fields individually and since we haven't defined anything for the backend so you don't know but let me tell you the data object is going to contain a field named status so i want to display whatever is value of that status field in this data object that should be become the part of this paragraph which is going to be the whole html for the message section so anything which is currently in the message section will get erased that is the lorem ipsum text and this paragraph will be appended in this message section as the only child and within this paragraph whatever we have received in this status field of this data object that thing is going to be displayed in the browser so that's the whole logic that should execute when we click on the register button of the register form we need similar logic for the login button so let me copy paste this whole part paste it over here and let's change the name from register submit to login submit prevent default and we are going to make a fetch request to controller.php method is we are going to use post again because we are going to send another form data but this time we need to change the reference to this form data from register form to login form then this fetch is going to uh, return as a promise so first we are calling the json method on it because the data which is going to be sent from our server is going to be in the form of json so we are converting it into javascript format which will be returned as another promise therefore another then block and now when we have finally got javascript object so we again have to display the login section to none registration section to none message section to block and then change again the contents of message section to just consist of a paragraph and within the paragraph we only are displaying the status field of this data object so that's it for the login form as well but obviously we can't test this part out because we haven't yet defined any backend that is our server which is named controller.php so let's go and define the server.php file so let's open our controller.php file now as we have discussed that this controller.php file is going to communicate with our model.php file that means we have to make model.php file part of our controller.php file so that the controller.php file can communicate or can call the functions defined in the model.php file those functions are actually going to perform the task which the controller will ask model.php to actually perform controller will only tell model.php to perform certain tasks the actual execution of those tasks is going to be done by model.php now we have to make this controller.php file listen to http requests since our in our view.html file we have created two fetch requests and both of them are fetch requests so therefore we should keep on listening for a, a http request method of type post 
therefore dollar sign underscore server we have to use this global variable and we have to check its request method if that is equal to post then the following should be performed but now here is the problem when our registration form is submitted since it's a post method that means that request is going to be handled by this if block but the login form also sends its request through a http post method that means that request is also going to be handled by this same if block so there is ambiguity this if block needs a way to figure out whether this request even though it's a post request but whether it's a registration request or it's a login request so that means we need to put another check over here normally what we usually do is that we we call a function called is set and we check for the name of the input field of type submit if that submit field of that particular name is set that means it's a one type of request otherwise it's something else but the problem is this let me take you to the this input field so what we normally do when we send a form in a normal way i mean by not using fetch request we give a name to this input field let's give it a name register and let's go back to the controller and we check if this variable if there is an input field in the post data which consists of the name register if that is set that means it's a registration request otherwise it must be some other request but since we are not sending http request through a form directly rather we are using fetch request and this fetch request gathers data in an object of type form data so what this form data does it's it's going to extract all the input fields but it will not include the input field whose type is submit so the form data assumes that it's only for submission it doesn't actually contain the actual data which needs to be sent to the server so that's why this form data excludes that part so we don't have any post variable with the name register in this field so we cannot use this so what shall we do then so that's the reason i had included the hidden field in the form so this is so this is a hidden field that means the user won't be able to see it but it has a name and it has a value so this name and value pair is going to be sent is going to be attached in the form data because this is not an an input field of type submit so this will be available therefore we don't need to put a name over here this input field of type submit doesn't require any name because this input field is not part of this form data object which is going to be sent in the body of the fetch request but this input hidden field will be so now we can verify if this post global variable contains a field which is named register that means this is a registration request likewise we can put another if block and here let me go back to view.html and uncomment this one and this hidden input field has a name login and value login as well so we will say if the request method is post and it contains a variable named login in its post global variable so that means this is a login request registration request is handled by this block login request is handled by this block so now i hope you are clear that why do we need this hidden field so that our server can distinguish between two http post requests now our controller.php file is able to handle two type of request both are post requests one contains a register variable in the post global variable and a, another one contains login variable in the post global variable now if you remember when the user is sent a link in its email and when that link is clicked that request also comes to the same controller.php file but it has a query string attached to it which says if the status has been verified or not so that means this controller.php should also handle a get request and this get request is going to serve the link which is sent in the email addresses 
So when that link is clicked, this if part is going to handle that request. So if the request method is get, then it should be handled by this if block. So let's start with the registration first. Within the if block of this registration part, let's extract all the data from the post global variable into local variables. So we have a field name name and let's store it in a local variable named name. Then we have an another variable named email which we are storing in an email local variable. We are also sent a password. Now we need to call a method called register which is defined in the model.php file and we have to provide it name, email and password. And when this method performs its execution, then it will return us a verification code. So we are going to store it in the verification code. You are seeing this red underline over here because currently our model.php file is empty. So there is no function defined over there and neither is any function named register defined in this file. So obviously we are bound to get this complaint from the PHP. So let's ignore it for a while. So now as you can see our controller.php is not performing any type of uh, logic. It's asking the model to register the user and it's getting the data which this registration method needs and providing it to this method. Then once the execution has been performed by this model.php by executing this register method, then register method will return us a verification code. So if the registration has been successful, we will actually have a verification code over here. If for some reason the registration failed, that in that case this verification code will consist of minus one. So we have to check if this verification code is minus one or not. If the verification code is minus one, we have to inform the user that something went wrong and maybe try again later. And if that is not the case, then we have to send an email to that particular user using the email address that is provided over here. And after that, we have to inform the user that, that the first part of registration is complete. Now you need to check your inbox and click on the link provided there and then your registration will be finally complete. So if verification code equals minus one, that means something went wrong. So we have to send a response back to the user and we are sending the response in the form of JSON object. So echo JSON encode. Now this JSON encode takes an array. Let's give it a name status and the value is going to be some message. Let's say something went wrong. Try again later. Else, so this part is going to be executed. If the registration did go successfully and we did get a, and the controller did get a verification code from this register method. So in that case, this else part is going to execute. So the first thing that we need to do is that we have to send an email to the customer or the user who has just registered. And since we are not supposed to perform any kind of logic over here, so we are going to call another me method defined in our model.php and it requires two parameters. The first one is going to be the email address and the second one is going to be the verification code. And after that, we have to again inform the user that the registration is successful and you have been sent an email with a link and you have to click that link to activate your registration.
again the send mail function is not defined over here and neither is it defined in the model.php file because it's currently empty therefore we are getting complaint from php but but we will define this function when we get to the model.php file okay once we have handled all the cases now it's time to exit out of the if part so this is first part handled now if you notice this whole if block is not executing any logic itself it's kind of ordering the model.php to execute this registration function which has the actual logic of registration defined and then once the registration is complete it then it checks the verification code if the verification code is not minus one that means the registration part went successfully then it's asking again model.php file to now send an email to this user whose email address is provided over here with this verification code which is going to be attached as a query parameter to the url which will be sent to the user as a link and then it's simply informing the user that everything went smoothly go and check your inbox so that is what meant by a controller it listens for the request from the client which is called view in this mvc architecture then it's kind of commands the model to perform these tasks so the act of actually performing the task is done by model controller is acting as an intermediary over here now let's move on to the login part so once we have decided that this is a login request and we know that the login request contains two input fields i mean besides the hidden field so two input fields with user data one is user name and other is user password so we need to extract those fields so let me copy this paste it over here since it doesn't have any email so let me remove this field now here it's going to again call a function called login which is defined which is going to be defined in the model.php and as a parameter it's providing the name and password to it and asking the model.php to actually log this user in then this login method will return the status now the value of this status in this case is going to be three different type of values if the status is 1 that means the user got logged in successfully so if the status is 0 that means we did find a matching record with username and password but the verification status is still set to be 0 that means even though the user has registered but it hasn't verified its email by clicking on the link sent in the email however if the status code is minus 1 or something else means it's not 0 or 1 that means we haven't found any record with matching username and password that particular user is not registered at all with us so now let's handle those three cases so if status equals 1 then something else if status equals 0 in any other case the else block should execute so let's go back to the if block with the status code set to 1 so we have to send a message back to the client and we have to welcome the user and since we are going to put a username over here in the string interpolation so we need to replace single quotations with double quotations otherwise we can't use a string interpolation so welcome user's name you have been successfully logged in that's it now let's move on to the when status code is zero then again we need similar message we need to send similar data but the message is going to be different this time so zero means you are registered but you haven't yet verified your email so let's say you have not verified your email yet if none of the both cases are true it means another message which says you are not registered with us and then finally exit 
Now let's work on the get portion when the request is actually get request. So this request is going to handle all the cases where the user clicks on the link provided in the email. So that link is going to contain a query string with a key code and value is going to consist of the verification code. So we have to extract that code since it's a get request. So get global variable and the query string is going to have the name code. So now we have got the code. Now we have to again ask model.php file to go and look for a record whose verification codes matches the code provided over here. And if any such record exists, then update its verification status from zero to one. And the controller is going to ask model.php to perform this by calling its verify method, which again we have to define but it will provide the code as a parameter and this verify method will again return us a status. If the status is one, that means model.php did find a matching record. Now this verify method is going to return us again a status, which is going to consist of either one or zero. So if the status code is one, that means the model.php file did found a record with the matching verification code and set its verification status from zero to one. If this status value is equal to zero, that means no record with matching code was found. So that means no record has been updated and obviously the customer needs to be informed some way. So if the status equals one, then following should happen else something else happen. So let's work on the case when the status code is equal to one. That means the verification went successfully and now the user can actually log in. So since this request has not come as a fetch request, so obviously nothing is listening. So that means nothing is waiting for a reply at the front end. Therefore, we have to redirect the client ourselves by providing a complete URL. So it's going to open up another window with this URL that we are going to provide over here. So location localhost colon 8080. So I'm going to make my server run on this port. If you are using different port, you have to replace the port number over here with, with the one you are using. After this slash, we have to, we have to provide the HTML file name where we want this client to be redirected back. So let's give it a name, show verification status.html and attach it a query string by appending question mark the status equals verified. If the status code is not one, that means something went wrong. And again, we have to somehow inform the client. So we are again redirecting back to the same file, but this time we are setting the status from verified to unsuccessful. That's it. Again, let's exit. So this is all our controller logic done. If you notice, let me reiterate one more time that in this whole logic, nowhere the controller is actually performing anything itself. It's calling the functions and those functions will actually execute the actual logic. And all of these functions are going, are, are defined in our model.php. But since our model.php has not been defined yet, so let's go to the model.php and define all of those functions. Let's start with model.php. Now, since this model.php is actually going to communicate with the database server, that means we have to create an object of type MySQLi through which we can communicate with the database. So let's create that connection. So we are going to create an instance of Stripe new MySQLi and storing it in the connection variable. This new MySQLi constructor requires four parameters. The first one is going to be the address where our database server is listening, which is localhost and port number 3306. This is default port, so you can skip it if you like, but I tend to keep it. Then the second argument is the username. Third is the password, which is root in my case, the username and password both are root in my case. 
If you have different username and password to log into your database server, then replace these two values with your ones. Finally, we need to provide the name of the database, the actual database with which we want to interact. So in our case, the name is email underscore verification underscore db. So this is the name that I have given to my database. If you create your database with a different name, then you have to replace this name with your database name. Now we have to check if we did, if we did succeed in getting this connection. So if connection connect air number if we have an error number in the in the connect error number that means we failed to connect with the database server so in that case send an appropriate message to the user and terminate the program status display the actual error message and exit if there is no error number in this variable, so this if part will never execute and we will still have an open connection with our database. So now we can define all the functions that we have called in our model.php file. The first one was registration function. The actual name was register. It requires th three parameters, name, email and password since we will be using this connection to communicate with our database and this is a global variable so it's not directly available in our function to make this global variable available in the in the function so we have to use global and then the same variable name connection so this means this connection is not a local variable rather we are referring to the global variable which is defined over here at the top now this function is about registering the user that means we have to insert a row in the table in the user's table and the user's table require name field or name column email password and verification code the verification status is going to be by default set to zero so we don't need to provide this value it's going to be set by default to zero likewise id is going to be generated automatically so the only fields that we need to provide is name email password and verification code and if you remember we have name email and password however verification code is missing so that means we have to generate this verification code ourselves over here so instead of defining the logic for verification code over here i am going to call another function this is a helper function because it's going to help with the registration purpose let's call it generate code this function will return as a code which is going to be used as a verification code. So now we have to define the logic how to generate the random string to represent the verification code. For that I am going to call a function. This is PHP's built-in function. It's called open SSL underscore random underscore pseudo bytes. And you can provide any number over here. So whatever number you provide, it's going to create that number's long random characters. Now some of those characters could be non-printable characters. So therefore we have to pass the value which is returned by this function to another function which is binary to hex. So it's going to convert it into hexadecimal values. And then we can return those hexadecimal values as a verification code. So let's go back to register function and let's create a verification code by calling this function generate code now we have all the data needed to create a new record in the user's table so let's start working on that i'm going to use prepared statements for this tutorial so we have to call a method called prepare on our connection object as an argument we can pass an sql statement to it which is insert into users name email password verification code these are the column names now values 
and for values instead of providing the actual values i am going to replace it with question marks this is how we do prepared statements now this prepare statement is going to return us another object which i am going to store it in the statement variable this prepare function on the connection object is going to return us a prepared statement that statements yet need to undergo some more steps to be actually completely prepared and then we can finally execute it so now on this statement we can call another function called bind bind params and that function is going to actually bind the values that we provide with the bind param with these question marks over here so these are like placeholders so the values that we provide over here are going to be inserted into these question mark places and the advantage of having a prepared statement is that now you don't need to sanitize the code manually you don't need to write any statements which does the sanitization for you so whatever is given from the user into these variables name email and password is these three fields have come from the user so there is a possibility of security attacks such as sql injection so even if there is an attack so whole statement which is actually an attack turns into a string and a string cannot be executed by my sql server only the statements are executed so if the statement gets converted into a string it cannot be executed so it becomes safe so by using prepared statements we are naturally secure from such attacks now let's call bind params and actually bind the params now we have to provide the parameter since we have four question marks over here that means we need to provide four variables over here first one is supposed to be name then email then password and the fourth one is verification code we have to make sure that there is a one to one mapping between the column name and the variable name and the bind param function so if in the sql statement if the first column name is name then in the bind param whatever variable you place over here that variable's value is going to get stored in the name column so we have to make sure that the column name matches with our values okay so now number of parameters are complete but we yet have to insert another argument which is always the first argument and it's of type string so what is this first argument is going to consist of it's going to tell the bind param statement the data types of these variables since in our case name email password and verification code all of them are of type varchar in our database so that means they are all strings so we have to put 4s in these quotation marks so this is telling the data type of first variable that is name is of type string the data type of second variable that is email is of type string likewise password is also of type string and verification is also of type string so if we had five variables over here we would have to put another character over here if we had some numeric value we would have to place d instead of an s over the year since all our fields are string so i have put four s's there now binding is complete that means we can finally execute the statement so to execute the statement we are going to call a function called execute now if this statement has executed successfully and it has affected one or more rows then we would have a field in this statement object called affected rows whose value is going to be greater than 0 so if it's 0 that means no row has been affected and that implies that no new row has been inserted so we have to make sure that a new row has been inserted so if statement num rows is greater than 0 means we have successfully created a new user in our database in that case we have to send the actual registration code back to the calling function so i am going to create a new variable called status and give it verification code so if that is not the case in that case we have to assign value minus 1 to the status variable and return that status variable that's it 
So if registration goes successfully, in that case, this register method is going to return the verification code which was generated and is stored in our database table, which is named users in our case. If, however, registration failed, in that case, we are informing our calling function by passing minus one as a return value. So this is all the logic for registration. Actually, we need to do one more thing. So before returning, let's close the prepared statement. Now let's move on to the next function, which is login function. This is user registration function. And this one was verification code generation function. Let's create login function. This login function requires two variables as its parameters, name and password. Now, since this function also need to interact with the database, so we are going to use the global variable connection over here. Now, again, we have to create a prepared statement, but this time it's going to be select statement because we are not inserting a new row. Rather, we are looking for a row with matching username and password. So instead of writing code from the scratch, let me go and copy these statements, these three statements. Copy, paste. Let's change the SQL statement. Now in this case, the select statement is going to be look for a row or look for a record which matches the username and password and gets its verification status. If the verification status is one, we will give a go ahead and let the user log in. Otherwise, we will refuse the user to log in. So select verification status from users where name equals question mark and password equals again question mark. So it's a prepared statement. Then we have to bind params. This time we have only two parameters. Both are of type string, so two S's, a name and we don't need email, password, we don't need verification code either. Then we execute the statement. But since this SQL statement is of type select, so it won't return number of affected rows because select statement does not affect any rows. It's only going to return as a result set. So we are going to call get result function on this statement object to get the result set and store it in a variable named result. Now, since we have already got the result set, we can create the prepared statement. Now on this result object, we can check how many number of rows have been returned. So we can check if result num rows if it is equal to one so this num row can return any value beginning from zero so if it's zero that means no row has been returned so that means no matching record was found however it can return value one two or uh, n number which means more than one matching records were found but since we have put checks to make username and email unique so at most we are going to get one result in any case so therefore we are only checking it for value one. So if the num row is equal to one, that means we did get a matching record. In that case, let's convert that result set into an associative array by calling fetch a sock on it and store it in variable status. Now check if if status verification status equals one that means the user has already verified its email and we can let him log in and the way to let him log in is by creating a session variable so let's start a session
at the top now let's go back again where we were quoting and inside the if body let's create a session variable let's give it a name logged user and store the username as its value so this ensures that our username is logged in currently then we can return one that indicating the user has successfully logged in if this associative array verification status is not equal to one that means it's zero that means even though we did found a matching record with username and password but the status code is still zero that means the user has not verified his email so in that case we have to return value zero so this if block is inside this first if block which executes if we have returned a matching record from the database however if we didn't find any matching record in that case we have to define another if block for the first the top level if in which we simply return minus one that means we don't have any matching record that means we don't have any user with matching username and password so this implies that the user has currently not registered with us at all this nested if block is going to be executed if user is registered as well as verified this else block is going to be executed if user is registered but not yet verified and this last if is going to be executed when the user has not registered with us at all so that's the end of our login logic as well now let's work on the verify function now if you remember the verify function is going to be called in the in this if block and this if block is executed when the user clicks on the link provided in the email so that email has a query string attached with the name code and its value is going to be the verification code generated at the time of registration so when this if part is activated our controller is going to extract that code and it's going to call the verify function and passes that code along to that verify function so now we have to define the logic in the model.php file and basically what we have to do there is that we have to look for any record in our users table with the matching verification code if any such record is found we are going to set its verification status to one otherwise we will return zero that means no matching record has been found so something again has gone wrong so let's define that logic so again before this generate code function which is a helper function i am going to define this function this function requires verification code as its parameter now again since we need to update our users table so that means we need this connection variable this connection object so make that object available in our function locally therefore we are informing that we are going to use this connection object which is defined globally now since we again need to interact with the database using some data provided from the user which cannot be trusted therefore we have to use prepared statement and since this update statement is going to again affect number of rows so we are going to go up to the register function and we are going to copy the four lines of codes but wait a minute okay so i have made a slight mistake over here since insertion is going to update number of rows so over here when, where we are checking the how many rows have been affected i have actually called num rows field we can only use num rows field if we have used select statement over here but since we have actually used insertion statement so we should have used affected rows so insertion so insert update and delete statements are going to affect some rows so therefore the attribute that we should be looking for is affected rows where a select statement does not return so does not affect any rows it simply returns number of matching rows according to the criteria 
so it returns num rows so only for the select statement we can call we can use num rows now i think i have copied the four statements and let me test it over here first thing first let's change this num rows to affected rows okay now let's change this insert statement to update statement update users set verification status to 1 where verification code equals question mark so now since we are only passing one parameter to the bind params so one single step s and since we are providing verification code so remove these variable names then we are executing the statement and if the number of affected rows is equal to one so since our username and email are going to be unique there can never be any row with same usernames or same passwords so at most this update statement is going to return us one value in the case of successful match with the verification code otherwise it's going to return zero so if the affected rows is equal to zero we have to inform the calling function that the verification status has been successfully updated to one and now the user can actually log in so we are going to assign a value one to a status variable else we are going to assign value zero to status variable then let's close this prepared statement and return the status variable that's it okay so we are done with the verify as well now the last thing that we need to do is we have to define the logic for send mail function so this send mail function takes two parameters the first one is going to be the email address where this mail is supposed to go and the second is the verification code which is going to be attached as a query string to the url which will be attached as a link to be clicked upon before we define any logic for send mail function we need to download a package called php mailer this php mailer package is going to give php the capability to create and send emails anywhere so what this php mailer is going to do is that it's going to log into my account pretending to be me using my credentials username and password from there it's going to create a new email for the client who has just registered and sends him the link into that email so to give this whole capability to the php we need this php mailer package so let's download this one so i'm going to open my terminal window over here composer require php mailer slash php mailer now this php mailer has created a folder named vendor and two composer files now let me take you to the php mailers documentation available on the github so this is the whole documentation how to download this package and how to use it in your program to send an email i'm not going to be digging deep into explaining each and every thing defined over here because i already have two tutorials explaining just that besides there isn't much that you can do you basically have to almost copy this whole thing tweak the value of these variables and and it's ready to send emails so i'm going to do just that the first thing is that we have to copy these three things in fact we are to load as well and we have to put it at the top of our program now for the rest of the thing it's going to go in our send mail function here we are creating an object of type php mailer so from this part onward up to the end i'm going to copy everything and paste it into send mail function 
I am going to explain few details. So here we are creating an object of type PHP mailer. Then in the try block, we are setting certain properties which are needed to be actually able to send an email. So the first property, we don't require it. It's for debugging purposes. So I'm committing this out. Then this host attribute, we have to set this smtp.example.com to smtp.google.com because I'm going to use my Google account as my SMTP server. So my PHP program will log into my Google account pretending to be me and there it will create a new email address and send it to the user who just got registered. Okay, so second statement, we have to leave it the same. Here in the username and password, you have to provide the username and password of the account in which you are going to log in and there you are going to create a new new email address for somebody. So here the username is going to be my email address, the digital nj at gmail.com and the password I'm going to this password I will define later because if I define this password right now then while editing this program I will have to continuously blur this portion out which takes a lot of time so I'm leaving this dot dots over here but you have to understand that if my program executes successfully that means before actually testing out the program I have replaced these dot dot dots with my password. I am definitely not going to show you over here, but rest assured that I must have done it. Otherwise, this program will not execute. No email is going to be sent anywhere. Let's keep the next two attributes the same. Then set from here, you can provide the email address, which is going to be sent as a sender to our user, which is registering. I'm going to use my same email and this is going to be the name which is going to be displayed so I'm going to call it then this add address is going to represent the recipient of this email so we are going to replace the email address over here with the variable email because this variable contains the recipient of this mail. So we don't need this, then we don't need this another address. Neither do we need to add reply to carbon copy, blank, blank carbon copy. We don't need them. We don't need any attachments either. So remove these ones. Then is HTML is true. The subject, this is going to be the title. The title is your email registration link. The body is going to be, so here we have to provide the link. So for that, we have to first create the link. So let's go up and let's create a link. So the link is going to be http local host colon 8080 it's going to go back to the controller controller.php but it's going to have a query string attached code equals verification code so we are again going back to the controller. This says small c. So controller.php. When the user clicks on this link, we will again go back to control.php. But this time it's a get request. And it has the data attached as a query string as well. So it has a one key value pair. The name is code and the value is the verification code that we have received from our calling function. Okay, now let's go back to the body. Let's change this message. Let's change single quotations with double quotations because we are going to use a string interpolation. Thanks for registering with us to activate your account. 
click here which is link this is the alternate body let's comment this out we don't need this one as well comment this echo message out because this is not json object so we are going to get error unexpected reply back to the client back to the client and client is expecting json so it's going to generate an error so make sure to comment this one out this echo statement but we need to make some changes so this link is just a text we have to convert this into an anchor tag so anchor href equals single quotation closing single quotation then the closing angle bracket here and then closing anchor tag okay that's it i think we are good to go everything is defined all we need to do is that we have to replace this with my password and then start the server and then execute the program so for that so let's work on that so i am going to start the server so the server that i am going to use the web development server is the one which comes built in with this php so php hyphen a localhost colon eight zero eight zero okay spelling mistake okay now the server is running on localhost port eight zero eight zero so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my password over here and then we are going to meet at our browser. Since we already have a record with my email address, so let's remove this record first. Finish. Okay, let's click on the register. Username, this time, let's use AAA email is going to be the same the digital nj and the password one two three four nothing so something went wrong turns out i have made some major blunders so let's fix those if you notice at the top the take for php is less than question mark and then the word php which i forgot to mention then in the php mailer it's ex it's actually supposed to be smtp.gmail.com not google.com and then for my email address i forgot to put .com over here and i also made some spelling mistakes for which i have been putting some annotations i hope you have corrected those so hopefully now this program is going to work fine so let's go and test it so let's start with the registration and let's put triple q then valid email address because i actually want to receive email this time password 1234 thanks for registering with us your account will be activated once you verify your email so let's go and check our database and see the verification status there so see my verification status is zero that means i should not be able to log into my account yet so let's go and try to log in before before actually verifying through the link login triple q one two three four you have not verified your email yet so let's go to my inbox and click on the link provided there in the email so if you notice i have i have just received an email and let's click on now if you notice even though it says this resource is not found because i forgot to create this html file anyways you can look at the query string that's more important it says the status has been set the status has been verified so let's go and check our database and see if that is the case refresh now if you notice the verification status has been set to one now now we should be able to log into our account so let's go and try to log in log in one more time Welcome Triple Q, you have been successfully logged in. So with this, we reached the end of our tutorial for today. I hope you liked it and I hope you also learned how to design your code or organize your code in MVC style from now onwards. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and comment.